And hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, <clears throat> quick introduction. My name is Eric Waldron, and I am one of the financial advisors uh, with General Electric Credit Union. I've been in the business uh, or the financial service business uh, in one form or fashion for the last 26 years, eight years with the credit union in my current role as an advisor. Simply put, I help our members retire more comfortably, more confidently, and make sure they stay on track to meet their individual retirement goals. Areas of financial planning that I cover range from investments such as stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs and annuities, to asset allocation, retirement income strategies, uh, to supplement social security and pensions, uh, insurance and risk management, full fi financial planning with our uh, award-winning software Money Guy Pro, which I will highlight at the end of uh, Joanne's portion of the webinar. Um, social security planning, and of course tonight's topic, which is Medicare planning. <clears throat> so with that said, I'm going to turn you over to one of our trusted partners and uh, Medicare specialists. She is the founder of Giardini Medicare, Joanne Giardini Russell. Joanne? Hey, thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, I am going to give you a, um, Unfortunately, it's going to be a quick tour of Medicare. Uh, I have 25 minutes, so I need to sort of fly through this, and I apologize for that. But I do want to point out that this is recorded on our YouTube channel. And at the end of the presentation, I will uh, give you some resources that you can, again, do in the comfort of your home, own home, as Eric, as uh, Carolyn talked about. These webinars are great. Uh, we do them often. They're, they're successful and they're helpful, I think. But Medicare is such a confusing topic. And we know that because uh, there's over 100 people on this session tonight. And we got over 30 questions in the just in the invite session. So we know there's a lot of questions out there. We're going to try and get to what we can. We have limited time. But rest assured, we are going to answer every question for everybody, OK? So uh, my name is Joanne. We have a Medicare firm. We are in Michigan. We do 100% Medicare. So we. We kind of understand the ins and outs of Medicare and what is confusing to you all. A lot of Medicare is, is built on confusion. And so some of our, our talks are built around uh, confusion such as this, these Costco kind of uh, publications. You know, you've got friends, you've got family, you've got everybody giving you information. And it's very hard to decipher what is what is accurate, what is uh, misleading, um, what is, you know, confusion. What do you really have to do? So what I'm going to do here is just point out, uh, number one, this Costco piece, we use this in our seminars just to just show you, just be careful, because this is a great publication. Millions of people read this, but information in there is incorrect. Those two bullet right there, those lines, the arrows, that it's two pieces of information that is wrong. And um, if you listen to that, I and mean, if you did what these articles say, you could cause yourself some trouble. So that is one piece. So what we do is we spend our time talking to you all about what Medicare is, do I need it, how much does it cost, how do I enroll in it, what's it going to cover, how do you put all of those things together. Uh, we help you do that. And then we really just want to work with Eric and his likes to make everybody relax and you go retire. Again, I'm going to fly through some of this. And again, I apologize. Um, there's a little lag here. What is Medicare? Medicare is just uh, health insurance, if you will. Think of it as a Blue Cross or a United Healthcare or an Aetna. Um, it's just like your traditional health insurance. However, it's provided by the government. And I think because the government is introduced, it kind of stresses people out more than it should. Um, but what we refer to as original Medicare has two components. It's part A and part B. It is not designed to pay 100% of your health care. Not at all. It's going to cover 80%. So when you go get this thing called Medicare or original Medicare, you're going to have two parts. It's going to cover 80% of your health insurance. It is designed to be just used here in the United States. And eligibility, who's eligible? It's those of you that are 65 and older, or if you're on disability for over two years or 24 months, you will be given Medicare or if you have end-stage renal or ALS. Okay, so just understand it is health insurance. And the biggest, uh, I'm going to really focus on 65 tonight, but you're eligible for that. It doesn't mean you have to go get it, and it doesn't mean you shouldn't get it. It just means you're eligible, eligible for it. So just keep that in mind. That's really important. Breaking down what Part A is and Part B. So Part A is hospitalization coverage. Simply room and board if you're hospitalized. It does have co-pays. It has co-insurance. We're not going to focus on that, too, because typically 
you are securing a product that is going to handle those copays. So you really kind of don't have to worry about that. What I want to point out here is part A, we talk about hospital and skilled nursing coverage and things like that. But when we talk about skilled nursing, people think that nursing home coverage or long-term care is covered. So please understand here, it is not covered by Medicare. This is when we want you to see someone exactly like Eric to talk about long-term care solutions. Doesn't have to be coverage necessarily, but you gotta figure out a way to cover long-term care should you need it down the road. Just important to know that Medicare is not going to pay for that, okay? I wanna make that really clear. So Medicare Part B, this is the part that people get really paranoid about. This is the part that could possibly come with a penalty if you don't get it done correctly. However, a caveat, please understand that only about 2% of Medicare beneficiaries experience the big penalty, but everybody is really nervous about that big penalty. They really think, everybody thinks it's gonna hit them. Just know if you do Medicare properly at the right time, right place, you're fine, okay? So part B, what it is, is it's your doctor coverage, it's chemotherapy, it's x-rays, it's outpatient services, like all those things, it's physical therapy. Um, it is all the things that you're used to paying premium for today, or you're used to getting it from your employer. Um, that's what Part B Medicare of Medicare is. Again, 80% of this health insurance is going to be covered by Medicare once you join the system. These two pieces, again, are called original Medicare. So A and B together are original Medicare. Our original Medicare is not going to cover dental, classic dental, cleanings, fillings, et cetera. It's not going to cover vision, meaning eyeglasses. It will cover cataracts and such. Not going to cover hearing. It doesn't co does not come with a gym membership, and it does not cover prescriptions. We talk through how to handle all of those areas after. One of the most confusing things that we like to point out, people, when they are approaching 65, you're probably hearing from friends and family and everybody that says you have to go get Medicare, at least Part A, at 65, you have to do something. That is not true. It doesn't mean you should not go get Part A, but you have to work through, do you need to get Part A or should you get Part A? A lot of different scenarios, I can't go through them all right now, but the reason somebody would not wanna sign up for Part A and Part B at Medicare at age 65, especially Part A, uh, is if you're working, you're contributing to a health savings account and you wanna continue to do so, and you're gonna retire at age 68, for example, and you're not collecting Social Security, if all those factors line up, you are gonna stay in your group plan. Do not sign up for any part of Medicare because you cannot contribute to a health savings account if you are enrolled in either Part A or Part B of Medicare. A lot of people don't understand that. So just don't do that. Um, Again, this causes confusion. This this little thing comes out, this piece of paper comes from the Social Security Administration, it hits your mailbox, you take it into someone like Eric, and you're saying, well, wait, look, here's that penalty thing. If you read the words very carefully, it just says if you don't sign up for Part B when you're first eligible, your coverage may not start right away, and you may have to pay a late enrollment penalty for as long as you have it. That is technically true. However, again, the words like may have to do this or that, those little teeny words cause people to do the wrong thing. So a lot of people will just sign up for A and B at this point, and you should not be doing that. Common, common thing. So we talk about where people are going for advice. They're going to their best friend. Bad place to do that. You're going to Social Security Administration. They only handle the enrollment and the premium payments for Medicare. So they are a poor source of Medicare advice. So just remember that if you're calling for any suggestion or advice about Medicare. Your doctor, your doctors know nothing about Medicare. We have a lot of doctor clients. So please don't ask them. If you call the billing manager at your doctor's office, they will tell you what plans they accept. It doesn't mean it's a good plan for you insurance-wise. And lastly, just picking on Eric, unfortunately, it's like don't go to your, your financial person, your CPA, HR, any of those people. They're just not spending their days in Medicare like we are. So that's why we work with a lot of these, these areas because it is kind of, it, it, it's, it's absolutely a specialty in its, in its own on its own, so we work with Eric to, to help his, his folks with Medicare. So again, we're coming up to age 65, this is a classic kind of phone call for us. So you're eligible for Medicare when you're 65. So we're gonna start asking a whole bunch of questions and you might see yourself in these scenarios. Are you actively employed? Okay, if you are, great. We wanna know if it's a large or a small employer because if it's a small employer under 20 people, I um, talked to someone yesterday, a nonprofit, for four people in, in that workspace. Well, she is turning 65, so she has to do Medicare. 
20 and under workspace, you have to do Medicare if it's a small employer. If it's an employer with 200 people and you're actively employed and you're going to stay working, no, you don't need to do Medicare, okay? Um, next scenario, are you eligible for any retiree coverage? You, you know, you call us and say, hey, I'm going to retire. Um, do you have active retiree coverage available to you? You tell us yes. Great. You can hop on that plan if you need to. Someone that is um, self-insured, ACA, the marketplace, a uh, small business owner maybe, who they just buy their own plan and it's $800 a month, those people, when they turn 65, do need to go and get Medicare Part A and Part B, get that in place, and they're typically going to be happier because they're going to save a lot of money on the premium. COBRA, and I want to spend a little extra second on this right now just to make it extremely, extremely clear in today's time with COVID happening, we are seeing a lot of people being displaced from the employer early retirement, people electing to retire or losing their jobs or furloughed and not being recalled, things like that. There is a lot of that happening, as you're all probably aware. Some doctors are just jumping out and saying, I'm done, I'm going to retire. It's just, it's, a whole, it's hitting everybody and everything. There are a lot of COBRA offers. So COBRA is an extension of employer coverage. COBRA just means if you are let go, you are given the, the work, worker insurance, you're given the employer plan for another 18 months, typically, and you can take that with you, and you will now pay 102% of the premium. Sometimes the employer might pay for that. However, very, very, very important to know that if you are over 65 years old and you are presented with a COBRA offer or your spouses, you need to have Medicare. Medicare is the primary insurance the day you step foot on COBRA. We are catching this constantly where people are not told anything by HR. They are 67 years old. They're walking out. They don't have Medicare. They think they have regular coverage and they're good to go and they're not. All right. So can't tell you how important that one is. So when we go through all of those steps and there are some more, we're just going to cover the big ones. But if someone gets to the point where they need Medicare, that's when we're going to start talking about how much is it going to cost me? A lot of people don't understand that there is a cost, number one. They think it's highly subsidized, and it, it may or may not be depending on what you think of these charges, but these are the charges. It is based on your income. So these charts, what, ha what happens is somebody uh, coming up to Medicare right now in 2020, they will look back on your tax returns from 2018, and they will look at your modified adjusted growth, and the column on the far right, depending on your filing status, is going to be what you will pay to the government for your Part B premium. You can see it goes all, all the way up to $491 a month. I will note that this is per person per month, okay? So just understand it is related to your income. It's a great time to go and work with an Eric when you're 62 or 63 years old in anticipation of these things hitting you later. So just understand that it is income-based. When someone's 66, they can't spend on a dime and control these income flows. There's also a surcharge on Part D as in drug plans. So just know there's extra money on that side too. I'm not going to go into that a ton. So now when we talk about how to enroll, we, we know how much it is. We know that you need Medicare. So when we get into the enrollment features, there's, there's some special situations. If you're automatically or if you are in, uh, sorry, collecting Social Security benefits prior to age 65, you're going to get your Part A at least automatically. And if you want to keep Part B, you can do that. But Part A, you're going to automatically get with your Social Security benefit, okay? There should be another one. If you're, sorry, if you're not contributing to an HSA, like we said, you should likely enroll into Part A. These are the enrollment windows. This is for somebody turning 65. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here other than you've got three months prior to your birth month, the month you turn 65, and three months after. That's only when you're turning 65. That's just one enrollment situation. So when and how do you enroll into Part B? Well, it depends on, uh, number one, you're going to be automatically enrolled, like I said, if you're drawing Social Security benefits. And be careful with this, because a lot of people are, are drawing their benefits early. They started at age 62, and then they, they turn 65, they get their card in the mail. They don't even know they're doing that. So you've got to be really careful that you're not taking Part B of Medicare accidentally, and it happens a lot. So. This is the charge. They don't understand the charges coming right out of their Social Security check. A lot of people will tell us they're not paying for Medicare, and they really have that, and they are. So be careful in watching that. If you get this card showing up and you do not want the medical coverage, you need to sign this and send it back to the Social Security Administration. So you will automatically enrolled. 
And if you are not automatically enrolled, you will go online, and this is the best way to do this, at the ssa.gov website. You're going to go online, and you can register for both Part A and Part B. This is the website. The lower right corner has the Medicare enrollment piece. Absolutely is the best way to do that. Online, over the phone, you can call, but I really wouldn't recommend that. Go in person. This is an older PowerPoint, as you can see, because right now the Social Security office is still closed. But again, this is the three months before your birthday, month of, three months after. Second scenario, this is when you're retiring, you're starting Part B after you're 60, 65 years old. And I'm going to skip through this because right now with COVID, we have gone to the online version of this. So if you need help and you're 68, being displaced, or want to go get your Medicare started, you need this form right here. This is an employer verification form that you need to get your employer to sign off on. And this is what you're going to provide to the Social Security Administration. And this is exactly this piece right here proves to them that you've had coverage since you were 65. And this is exactly the reason you're not going to get a penalty for enrolling into Part B of Medicare when you're 68 or 70 years old, for example. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. You didn't need the insurance back when you were 65 because you were still working or your wife was still working, all right? So that's why you get this form filled out. This gets uploaded these days to Social Security Administration. Boom, you get your Part B hooked up, and then you're kind of ready to go. This is also your application for Medicare Part B. And that's another form. I want to kind of get through that. You're going to note when you want it to start. You want to be real clear with the Social Security Administration. And I'm going to skip some of these slides and, and just do interest for time. All of that is considered a special enrollment period. And I know these are extremely, all of these things are very, very um, confusing. And again, I apologize. It's just we have 25 minutes to get through this. But that's a special enrollment period. And that's what you're getting if you're coming later to uh, Part B. I'm going to, again, skip through some of that. But now that you're enrolled in Medicare, this I want to get to because this is probably one of the most important features of Medicare that you need to understand. Once you get everything hooked up, um, you're going to be faced with a coverage decision. So again, remember that Medicare is going to cover 80% of your health insurance. So the 20% um, elsewhere needs to be covered somehow, some way, or it should be. Technically, it doesn't have to be, but it should be. So you have two methodologies to get there. This, I would just love everybody to look at the Medicare and You handbook when you get a chance. You can go online and get it. But on page six, it clearly states your two options. One option on the left-hand side, uh, you, you stay with original Medicare. Remember, that's Part A and Part B. You add a supplemental product, which we call Medigap. That word is in the handbook, but it's a Medigap. It's a little policy that you put over, essentially, the A and the B, and all it does is pay everything that Medicare does not pay. It is extremely simplistic, if you will. There are no co-pays, no co-insurance, no networks, no nothing. It is really just trailing original Medicare. It does not include drugs, so you need to add a drug plan. It also doesn't cover dental and things like that. On the right-hand side, this is a whole different type of policy that you can purchase or a, a contract. This is called Medicare Advantage. Medicare Advantage is a bundled, kind of an all-in-one program that you are essentially leaving original Medicare, you do not have A and B any further, and you are going over to Medicare Advantage. Medicare Advantage is offered by several, several, several uh, insurance companies, and there are multiple plans. A lot of your counties will have, or your, your, uh, your, your county will have, you know, 10, 20, 30, 50 plans, sometimes in different areas. These have co-pays, co-insurance, networks, restrictions, and things like that. They typically build in the drug plan. And they will typically offer some extra benefits such as the vision and, and different services and things like that. No matter which path you take, I want you to understand that you're still going to pay your premium to the government for Part B. So a lot of people think if they go to Medicare Advantage that they will not be paying that $144.60 per month, but they will be. So whichever one you pick, $144.60 or whatever your, um, the amount you owe to Medicare, that's your base premium. So you're going to be adding this, either one of these, to the equation, okay? So trying to be very clear that this is how original Medicare works. You have a Medicare card because that's your primary insurance. Your supplement is your secondary, and then your drug plan is the second one. And then this is how Medicare Advantage. You take all those things on the left, and you turn it into one card, and this is typically called Part C. So it's a little different. 
This is just a financial example. We like to fly through this, but Medigap, this is my zip code up here in Michigan. We can give this plan to somebody for $115 a month. They have $198 deductible and everything else is zero. So if it's chemotherapy, skilled nursing, physical therapy, anything that they have done, doctor visits, they pay zero for all those things. They just pay the $198 deductible. Flip side, Medicare Advantage, I can give somebody a zero premium PPO plan. They will pay nothing. However, when they go to the hospital, they're gonna pay 350 a night. When they have chemotherapy, they have 20% coinsurance. Physical therapy, they go in 40 times. Again, you can see they do have some dental and they have a little bit of eye uh, vision coverage and they don't add a drug plan extra for extra premium. So it just works very differently. They do have a financial cap, which is important to pay attention to, 5,300 in this case. But that's pretty much how those things are just very different from one another. So I think that kind of shows. This is important to understand. So what happens is sometimes people will choose Medicare Advantage plans and they can work fabulously for some people and not very well for other people. What you need to understand with Medicare Advantage or with Medicare in general is that pre-existing conditions do come into play. This is extremely important. A lot of people don't know this until sometimes it's too late. We get some people buying a Medicare Advantage plan maybe for zero premium because they were healthy, they wanted a little dental, everything is great. Three years later, they come back to us because now they have learned that Medigap is, is a stronger coverage and they want that plan because they've just gotten a cancer diagnosis, for example. They come to us and apply, want, wanting to apply for a Medigap plan. We have to tell them, no, that they're disqualified. They are denied coverage because of pre-existing conditions. So this is key to know that in the, in the Medigap, uh, Medicare New Handbook, again, choosing a Medigap policy, you have an open enrollment window. So when your Part B of Medicare starts, you have six months to go buy any Medigap contract you would like without anybody saying no to you based on pre-existing conditions. This is how we are able to provide people with very, you know, MS, chronic illnesses, you know, HIV, a, a slew of, of serious illnesses. We can give them Medigap when they're first eligible for Medicare based on this six month open enrollment window. So just remember that pre-existing conditions can and do come into play. So you do need to make a good choice out the gate when you're signing up for your Medigap. Medigap. So this is just the open enrollment. We can skip that. Again, when I talk about confusion and just poorly worded things out there, if you'll you'll start noticing some of this because if you look at the flyers coming in your mailbox and the media and things, this just said you can change plans as your situation changes, but only during different times of the year, which is October. So if you're talking to somebody that says, well, you, if you don't like this plan, you can just change it next year. Just be very careful because as I just said, if you get cancer, in my mind, the situation changed, but you're not going to be able to change plans. So it's just, it can be misleading. So you just have to be careful with words, um, just, just very clear with that kind of stuff. These are some perks of Medicap. You know, you can travel pretty freely. Budgeting is a little bit easier. You know your fixed monthly costs. Um, flexibility. You can go to any doctor in the country that takes Medicare, but you got to be okay with the higher monthly premium. And Medicare Advantage can work great for people that maybe you can't afford that higher monthly premium. If you're under 65 and disability, those are people that should have a Medicare Advantage plan typically. Um, VA system is great. We just give them a Medicare Advantage plan so they can come outside of the VA. People that might be older and not travel at all, they, they're fine staying in a network. Um, things like that. They don't have, you know, travel plans. Those are fine. So Medicare Advantage can be a really good option for a lot of people. And Medigap is a really good option for a lot of people too. So you just got to understand what you're buying. This is how drug coverage is going to work into things. Um, if you're on original Medicare, we will provide somebody with a prescription drug plan on top of their Medigap plan. Again, remember that Medicare Advantage, they bundle all of these things together. So you have that built into those plans. They just work a little differently, but you're going to get drug coverage somehow, some way. This is the donut hole. So the donut hole kind of worries everybody. They hear about this thing. Um, we have people that don't take any medications that are worried about the donut hole. All I will say is if you are taking high price medications, the donut hole is just kind of a silly way, if you will, to say you're gonna spend a lot of money potentially on prescription medications. So be, be ready for some sticker shock. I will tell you that consumer, so commercial, um, health insurance plans through the workplace do often do a better job with medications. So a lot of people, uh, Eliquis, for example, it's you know roughly $100 a month in Medicare space where you might be used to a $15 copay. 
through your commercial plan. So there is definitely some sticker shock. We have a really good video about the donut hole on our YouTube channel, so I don't need to explain this. But again, don't worry about it at all if you take one little lisinopril, you know, uh, pill, okay? So what happens after all of these steps, here's our role. We, we help people with coverages. We assist people in the insurance carrier selections. We actually enroll them into the plan and just really help you avoid the stress of calling the insurance carriers. We're kind of the buffer in between those two, um, those two roles. We review every year. We review people's drug plans. Now, your drug plan is the one thing that you're really going to want to control if you are especially going the Medigap route. If you go the Medigap route, our opinion is, is pretty much stick with a big, good carrier that you know is going to be good for you for even 10 or 20 years. And the drug plan is just really, really important to monitor the drug plan every year because those costs are constantly changing. Uh, the plans are constantly swapping out, you know, who, who does what and what pharmacy is best and things like that. So that's pretty tricky with that piece. So we do help with that. Uh, the annual election period, this is the time when you can make changes to your plan. So let's say you're out there hearing this and, you know, you, you think, I, gosh, I didn't know Medigap it was even there and I kind of like the concept of that. I'm healthy. Can I have that? Well, if you are hearing that and thinking that, then yes, uh, October 15th until December 7th, you can call. We can talk to you about underwriting. If you get approved, all is well. You start that plan January 1st. On the flip side, you know, you've been having Medigap, you're kind of tired of maybe paying that monthly premium, and you want to go to a Medicare Advantage plan. This is the time you can go into a Medicare Advantage plan, and again, that starts January 1st. This is also the time when we're dealing with the drug plans. So October to December, we are analyzing and looking at the drug plans for 2021 during the upcoming session in the, this fall. Important to know those dates and stay on top of those. Uh-oh, I think my screen's stuck, Carolyn. I'm not getting past that. Okay, when can you change Medigap plans? Just understand with Medigap, you can change it every single day of the calendar year. And we try and emphasize that because people don't think they can do that. You have to pass medical underwriting, but they just think they have to change it and save it for the fall. You do not have to do that. So if you're out there and you have a Medigap plan and you want to change Medigap plans, you can do that all the time. I'm going to give you some resources here. And we have um, YouTube. I will say this is probably one of our biggest and best resources. There are all sorts of uh, tutorials. There are 12 to 15 minute clips. There are how to create your Medicare account, what's the difference, what, you know, explaining Medigap, explaining Medicare Advantage. There's one about COBRA and how it interacts with Medicare. So you need to be careful with that. How much does it cost? There's one about appealing some of those IRMA surcharges. We work with people to do that. A uh, lot to get into tonight, but there's just a lot of these features out there and we're, we're constantly growing this channel. So it's a really good way to just, again, curl up, make some, you know, seriously get a list um, together, put your questions on a list and get on the phone with somebody and ask all the questions you need to ask about Medicare. We have something called the vault. And if you, this is the address on there, it's the bhgvault.com. And this vault, we've got a lot of resources in here too. So if you need an employer verification form, if you, um, you know, if you have a prescription high price uh, drugs. We have a list of, you know, some, some vendors and some places that can maybe help with assistance in pricing. We talk about Medigap in here. We talk about Medicare Advantage. We talk about Kroger. So we talk about all the things too that are on the YouTube channel, but it's a little bit more in uh, PDF format and, and reading. Okay. So you can go through that at your leisure too. Um, we try and do a really good job with people. So we have good Google reviews. This is our website, which we're rehauling uh, come up in the next 10 days. But what we do is we have a scheduling or consult button. So on this page, you can go right here if you'd like to talk to any of our advisors. There's no cost for our service, I should mention. We just chat through this on the phone, and hopefully we give you enough value that if should you enroll in a product and we can enroll you, that's how we are compensated ultimately. This is our phone number. You are welcome to shoot uh, email questions ahead or talk to any of the advisors. And back to Eric. <clears throat> Thanks, Joanne, for all that good information. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, one of uh, the areas that we are really excited in uh, the investment services uh, 
team uh, and proud of is our partnership with Money Guy Pro, uh, which is simply it's an advisor based uh, planning software. And what it does is it provides a roadmap for you to follow in retirement uh, to ensure your plan is on track, especially with longevity being very real. What used to be a 20 to 25 year retirement is now turned into a 30 to 35 uh, year retirement. So what we do is we look at all your investment assets. Then we look at your income sources such as social security and pensions. Then we find out what your unique goals are in retirement and then go a step further and break those down into wants, um, excuse me, needs, wants, and wishes. Um, and what we do from there is we stress test it over a thousand different scenarios as if you were to live your life a thousand different times with a thousand different uh, return possibilities. And we typically like to see a success rate of over 75% over those 1,000 tests. So we, uh, we prepared a video for you guys tonight. It's a short video that just uh, is gonna better explain it for you guys and something that you can watch. Go ahead, Carolyn. Life isn't static. Life changes. And it's important to be prepared for those changes. Welcome to Money Guide Pro, the groundbreaking financial planning software that sparks the important planning conversations and helps you create your own personalized plan for your life and retirement. The experience is simple. We start with the easy stuff, your personal information, then move to the exploration of your personalized goals, which are the heart of a quality financial plan. Your goals are divided into needs, wants, and wishes. Not all goals are equal. This will help us prioritize what is most important to you. Buying new cars, paying for college, providing care for a loved one. We'll address each of these and learn what is important to you and why. We also address those items you may not be thinking of. So it's important to include healthcare costs into your goals and discuss longevity to make sure you're protected. Next, we evaluate the resources you have available to fund your goals. We review everything from retirement income, pension and social security, to investment assets and insurance, or other assets such as a home, rental property, or business and stock options. Do you have liabilities? We can enter those too and then view your net worth statement. We'll discuss risk and decide how much risk you're willing to take. You have one question, can I fund all my goals without running out of money? We provide an easy to understand result called the confidence meter, which shows you your probability of success. If you want to see more detail within the result, you can drill down into each individual trial or view a year by year breakdown. The plan may not end up in the confidence zone initially, so we'll make recommendations to get your plan into the confidence zone. One of the most interactive tools, the Play Zone, allows you to instantly see how changing some of your expectations, when to retire and how much to save, can impact your plan. We can also test the effects of risks outside of your control. Most importantly, your financial plan isn't static. It will adjust with you over time, and we will continue to review and make improvements as your life changes. You'll be able to view your plan through easy online access and see your dreams come into reality. All right. Um, in closing, before we get to the uh, Q&A, portion of uh, tonight's webinar, I would like to just quickly mention that access to this Money Guy Pro and your own financial plan is a complimentary member service. So feel free to contact me uh, if that is of interest to you and we can go to the, um, the Q&A portion now, Carolyn. Great, thank you, Eric and Joanne. And just to reiterate, I know Joanne covered a lot of information here, but this is being recorded and we will send you the recorded version after. Um, and if you're interested in setting up an appointment with Joanne, you will work with Eric. And his information will also be in the email that we will send you tomorrow. So I know we got a couple questions in while the presentation was going on. I'm going to do my best to get through a few of them without taking up too much time tonight. 
Uh, but as a reminder, we will reach out to you and Eric will be in touch as far as answering your questions. So Joanne, one of the first questions I have is what's the best way to approach planning for Medicare and different plans? The best thing you can do for yourself is at 64 and a half, um, start paying attention to Medicare and, and truly just taking some time learning. And I will say taking some time talking to friends and talking to people is great but again put all those questions to paper and then get on the phone with somebody that knows about medicare to help weed that out so medicare is just extremely stressful and so many people are afraid to make a wrong decision which is great um but it doesn't have to be that over the top so the best thing you can do is just get a little bit of time on your on your side if you if you can obviously a, a, a job loss quickly it's a little different um but take take time to plan it out and start early. Even 63, 64 is not crazy. Okay, next one. Do you sign up for Medicare while still working or how does that work? Typically, no. So typically when someone says to us on the phone, well, I'm turning 65, I'm still working. I plan to work another two years. I have group insurance. I'm paying $200 a month for that insurance and I'm pretty healthy. And that those are the mechanics of things. We would typically say no. Just stay on your group plan. Don't. And, and it's a large employer, things like that. Uh, you don't have to jump off a group plan to go to Medicare. And conversely, you should actually always run the assessment because what if you're paying $900 a month with a group plan, and then now you're eligible for Medicare? You should actually, in that case, we would say we'll get off the group plan and go to Medicare. So there are no automatics unfortunately, which makes Medicare more difficult for all of you. Okay, how much are the additional plans, for example, Part B, Part C, Part D, and Part F? So the plans can vary immensely. You can get a Medicare Advantage plan for literally zero, and you can buy a Medicare Advantage plan from the same company. Um, all the way $300 a month in Michigan. So again, I've got one carrier here where I can go from zero up to $300 a month, and those are six different plans. That's on the Medicare Advantage side. If you on the Medigap side, you can get a plan F or plan G for the 100, you know, Ohio, 120 to $145 range for a 65-year-old and a lower costing drug plan which are pretty darn common for people are 13 and 14 dollars a month but a drug plan can go all the way up to 100 a month if you're on extremely expensive medication but that's generic pricing across the board okay um do payments or costs escalate over time yes always with medigap we tell people that are purchasing a medigap plan to expect Unfortunately, that these things are going to go up five to ten percent a year. What you want to do is avoid carriers where it might go up twenty six percent in a given year. So you got to be careful with your carrier selection. Medicare Advantage plans, on the other side, uh, those prices have actually been going down. No, of course you can't get lower than zero. Um, but Medicare Advantage, it's important to understand that Medicare Advantage is funded by the U.S. government. So therefore, when the government increases the funding for those plans, they can truly lessen the premiums to make them more attractive to consumers. So when you think about it, Medicare is offloading risk. They are giving risk over to the private insurance companies. They are hoping that the insurance companies can enroll you into plans so that Uncle Sam doesn't have to pay for 80% of your health care. So if you follow that whole you know, logic, the carriers are making a lot of money, um, that's why they're subsidizing these plans to be really attractive to many, many people. Okay, so a couple more questions from those who have submitted it, and we are trying to get through all of them. Um, one is, if I'm not taking Social Security at 65, can I ha set up to have my Medicare monthly payment to be auto-withdrawn from my bank account when I start coverage at 65? Yes. There's called an easy pay system. So you can go right onto their website and set up easy pay. You can even do credit cards. Absolutely, that's a great way to do it. Otherwise, you will get a quarterly bill. Every three months, you're going to get a bigger bill, but you can set it up monthly. Okay. 
Okay. Um, one is I am with a company with less than 20 employees. I had to go on part B. I was told company insurance became secondary. I still pay for company insurance. I'm outside the six month window to sign up for Medigap after starting part B. Am I okay to wait until retirement to lose company coverage? In that case, I would always get the quote and find, well, or you know how much you're paying for your company insurance, but if you're paying truly more than $200 a month for that employer insurance, you're overpaying and you'll actually be one of the situations where we often will say go out and get Medigap or something else, but typically a Medigap plan because you're going to have better coverage than the employer plan and it's going to be a lot less money. Unless, unless the employer plan is given to you for completely free, then that's a different story. But to protect your six-month window, there's nothing to say you're going to be protected. So it's a little bit dicey. Um, what happens is at the end of employer coverage, should you become sick and uninsurable in our, our world, um, we do have something called guarantee issue that can get you into a plan, but you just have more limited plan selection. So it's, I know that's not quite an answer, but it's kind of a maybe. So it's assessing all of those features. Okay, and I have one follow-up actually from the question before about rising costs. You said that mm -hmm. you need to find a carrier that doesn't raise their costs more than 20%. How can you figure out which carriers are raising their prices 26, 25% per year? Sure. Yeah, that's a great, great, great question. I wish we had the crystal ball to figure it out. However, what we can say is what we see is we, you know, we watch carriers, right? So there are certain carriers that I can't mention just because I can't mention, but there are some even large big name carriers that will, what they do is they undercut rates and they get people in, they ratchet the rates up. And then what happens is if you're uninsurable in three or four or seven years, you can't move to the different carriers. So it's a little bit of just a market grab play. Um, it's, a, it's a couple carriers that we just won't contract even with because of that. Um, what you want to do is kind of ask friends and family that are honestly 85, 90 years old and see who they have as carriers. A lot of times that's your best way of knowing who's kind of long-term stable. Uh, the other part of that is there's a, a fair amount because Medicare is lucrative. It's a lucrative business. There's a lot of people aging. So they, they, there's, you're a big market, unfortunately, which is why you're solicited all the time for these things. But there are a lot of kind of smaller, I, you know, I would say no brand carriers that come out. And you got to be careful because if they don't know what they're doing or they have a very, very small market share and they got a few people in there with a cancer situation, their rates can just pop up. And you don't know that. So be very wary of um, cheapest carrier. Um, there's a lot to this answer. A, you know, agents are given underwriting bonus. There's just a lot to this, but um, it, it's tough. But I'd be happy to talk to anybody about this kind of more privately, I guess. I don't want to bash carriers. <laughs> <laughs> if someone has VA coverage, are they required to sign up for Medicare at 65? If they have Part A coverage, they would. that is Medicare. So Sorry, I, VA coverage, VA. Oh, VA, veterans. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, no, mm -hmm. no, they do not. So veterans are a little different. They do not have to sign up for any part of Medicare if they don't want to. However, I would always, we do as a firm, just recommend that they do get A and B, even though they're going to pay for B, because what happens is even with COVID, there were situations where they shut everything down. I guess a lot of things were shut down anyway. Um, but pre-COVID, Atlanta, the VA hospital there just stopped doing surgeries for three months. You know, you have to you have to really trust the VA because if you if you use the VA for like four years, for example, you did not get your Medicare A and B because you didn't have to go get it. When you do want to go get it, you are a penalty situation. So that person would have a 40 percent penalty. So. And you realize that you're only you're restricted with the VA. If you absolutely love the VA and you never see that leaving your world till you're 100 years old, then that's fine. We just don't see that turn you know into reality so i'd be careful there okay so i'm trying to combine a few questions that are coming in sure. but how can you tell if a specific procedure or medication or pre-existing conditions are covered well again if you if you're all set with pre-existing and you're new to medicare and you've got a a, a medigap plan based on that or everything's covered so if something is medically necessary and, and approved and covered by Medicare, it is paid for. 
and then the Medigap plan would pay the rest of its paid for. Uh, a good place to go is you can put an app on your smartphone from Medicare, and it's just it's a it's a what it's a coverage thing. You can put in flu shot, shingle shot. You can put in acupuncture. Type in all your things to see what's covered, and it's pretty good source. Medicare.gov is another source of that. Your doctor's office can be a good source because they can tell you what is covered by Medicare. A lot of things are covered by Medicare. Medications are a little different because some medications will run through the Medicare side of things and some um, medications are going to cover or run through a prescription drug plan. But again, there's a broad spectrum of those things. A lot of them are covered. Uh, injections are typically covered through Medicare Part B. Uh, prolia injections for females, things like that. So there's a lot. There's a lot of cross-pollination here in my answer again, but there are resources to find out what Medicare does cover. And like I said, they cover a lot of stuff. So again, medically necessary, it is covered by Medicare typically. Okay, and this is gonna be our last one for tonight. If you're on Medicare, can you still use the cheaper plans that some of the pharmacies offer when you talk about the cost of income from Medicare, is it by person or by household for a married couple? How does that work? I think that's a two part question. If you're asking about a discount drug plan, <laughs> like a good RX, and that, that's fine. I think so good RX, things like that, you can absolutely use those even if you're on Medicare, you just gotta be maybe a little cautious at the pharmacy. So a lot, what a lot of people do is if you typically get your, your, your scripts at Walgreens, they'll take the good RX plan and go to Kroger or something like that, just so they don't know you have a, 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 a drug plan on file and accidentally kind of run it through. That's just a little tip. Um, but you can, uh, by all means, you can use that. And I would always advocate using good RX. It's great. Just punch in the medication, see if it's cheaper elsewhere than what you're currently going to pay on a Medicare plan or and even your group plans at work, because some of those are getting pricier. The other part of what is Medicare going to cost? It is, again, it's based on whether you file singly or, or are single, or if you file jointly as a couple, that's what you're going to be based on. So even if one party, one, you know, one person stayed home for 25 years, they are still going to pay based on joint income from the spouse. They're going to pay whatever that level is. And that's what you're each going to pay for Medicare Part B. Just understand, so a lot of people that are retiring uh, if they've got a higher surcharged amount and now they retire and you're not living on that kind of income, we can help people appeal that number downward if, if they need that help too. So, Okay. Thank you so much, Joanne. I will stop it here. I know there's a few more that we haven't gotten to yet, but like I said, Eric will be reaching out in the next few days to provide you answers for your questions. Um, thank you all for joining us tonight and being a part of our very first webinar with General Electric Credit Union. As a final reminder, you're going to be getting an email tomorrow with the recorded version, a link to view that, and as well as a post webinar survey, which again, we would really appreciate your feedback as we're continuing to expand our program. Thank you all, and I hope you all have a wonderful night, and thank you, Joanne and Eric, for your time tonight. Sure. Thank you.